So I thought I'd do a quick video today about how I solved a rather interesting problem. Now, I currently use Crossfire for all of my kit. And recently I started getting back into flying some fixed wing aircraft. You've probably seen some of the videos about things like the T-28 Trojan that I've been putting together. Now this introduces a little bit of a problem because if you try to find yourself a crossfire receiver that can output more than eight channels, you got to, how are you going to do this? You know, and in the same regards, if you you can't really like on the free sky system daisy chain these things together to put two receivers in the plane. Now, coupled to that, I have an issue is that I also wanted to use INAV on board the system, which then meant great. I'm going to use Crossfire talking to INAV. But I know, generally on the Matic boards, you won't get many more than seven channels supported. So how on earth was I going to do this? Because I now had a plane which required six channels minimum to run, and then I wanted another three for the head tracking so the pan, tilt, and roll could work. So that now meant I'm talking about 11 channels, pretty much. I probably want to use another channel for the RSSI signal. <laughs> it's just not going to fit. <laughs> um, now, Crossfire does support 12 channels. The question is, how do you make this work? So what I thought I would do is pop up a little video to show you how I put this all together. Now, it's not overly complicated. It's actually quite clever, um, in my opinion. Um, and it's kind of done by daisy chaining a few little bits and pieces together that you can buy off the shelf. So. Um, let me show you how it's done. I'm hoping that um, I'll be able to get some close-up pictures of this with the camera. We'll see how that turns out, but um, let me show you now. Okay, so what I've got going on on the desk here are a couple of different things that are all laid out. What we've got, we've got sitting down here, I've got a little Matic F1 board, sorry, F411 board, so F411 wing, which is wired up into a little crossfire receiver over here and then you'll notice I've got a little bit of magic going on out here. Now what exactly is that? Now let's talk through this step by step. So crossfire over here, what we have wired in is a very straightforward system running on this side here using the four channels on the micro receiver. So what I've done is I've taken power which is the red and black and I've led that through to the wing over here. Nothing rocket science about that. And what I've also done is I've taken two signal wires and I've gone to the serial ports over here. Now, within the INAV software on this board, I've configured UART1 to be essentially, you know, crossfire receiver and magically everything works. I've got full telemetry, everything just works perfectly. So that's step one. Okay. Now, moving on from that, I've got an issue is that I obviously need to try and get all those high channels that are in the 12 channels above to come out somewhere else. And there's not enough ports on this board over here. So what I've done, and you can take a look at the crossfire on the rear here, I've piggybacked in another lead running to this, oh, I think it's called RMI LEC board. And I'll, I'll put a link in the description to the video. Now. What I've done over here, you can see that the signal wire for that is soldered on to port 4 of this little Crossfire Nano receiver. Now, one of the great things about Crossfire is it allows you to kind of reassign where things go. Now, it's not all plain sailing. Port 4, I'm able quite effectively to tell it to be an S-Bus port, which I've done using the GUI on the Horus radio. That's great. But um, originally when I tried to do this, I sold it all up to port 3. Well, that doesn't work because port 3 is not allowed to be an SBUS port. So there's a little bit you know, of, of toing and froing to get this right. But the long and short of it is what I've done is I've gone onto my crossfire and I've configured you are, well, port 4 on here to output SBUS. And that now goes to this lovely little breakout device over here that RMILEC make. And what I've done is I've configured that little board to receive an SBUS signal. 
So now what you've got is a situation where Crossfire is outputting CSRF to the flight controller, and that works perfectly, and you have an SBUS stream outputting 12 channels to this breakout board. Now, what that means is that simultaneously, I can run channel 1 through to 12 on the RMILEC board at the same time as channel 1 through to 6 on the flight controller. Now, this works incredibly well. I'm just going to pop the radio on here so we can show you a couple of things here. Oh, there we go. And what I will do is pop some power onto this magic device, which I can use any of these pins for power. Boom. Now look at that, you can see the receiver and everything kicked in as that all happened. Now we have a server here, and just to prove the point, you will notice that the SBUS is talking to the breakout board, and if I jiggle the sticks on the radio, that server is jumping around all over the place. Fantastic. Now, looking at the radio, if I jump in on my system menu on the Horus and run through the Crossfire Lua scripts, you'll notice that if I go onto the RX configuration, in fact, I still need to change this, I can change that to be a 12 channel. I can then go down on the output map and this kind of reflects exactly what's there. I've got transmit with Crossfire on port one, output two is Crossfire receive, and down here on output four is SBUS. And you'll notice here, if I try to go through here, I can do all sorts of things, but the one thing I can't do is SBUS, which is, you know, one of those things. So maybe I'll just do link quality. I don't know. I'm not actually going to use it, so it won't make any difference. So maybe for quality sake, we'll just leave it on channel three. Doesn't make any difference. Now, for me personally, I tend to do things like say, okay, channel 12. I will use as my link quality, and I'll use that in the RSSI on the flight controller for the OSD. And there you go. You know, the net result is this little RMILEC board from Banggood allows you to instantly grab 12 channels. Now, I, I do know that, um, that INAV, for example, does support a, a little breakout board for supporting more servos. Um, I personally just find this one a little bit messy. The board's big. It's kind of, it, it feels like a bodge job for something they could have done a little bit better. But, you know, that's my personal opinion. There's nothing particularly wrong with it. In my opinion, this board plus the S-Bus crossover and the Crossfire type thing going on, that works fantastically. And, you know, the other day I was flying my um, Trojan with it. It's faultless. It just works. So for me, this is a big win. It's the way to do things. Um, hopefully you guys have had a bit of inspiration on in how you can daisy chain these things together to make your um, somewhat more complicated models work.